I appreciate it. All right, race has long been part of America. And earlier this week, we know that Tulsa, Oklahoma, they recognize the 100th year since the Greenwood race riots. Sundown towns have been finding their way into pop culture, and critical race theory is now a hot button issue in school curriculums around the country. I recently spoke with a leading expert on the matter, Professor James W. Lowen, about what it all means. Here's what he shared. Jim, thank you for joining us today. Great to have you here and have this conversation that I think people are already talking about, but to get some true facts behind it, right? Um, let's start first with race theory. We've heard a lot about that in the last year. What is it for people who don't understand it and where are we with it right now? Well, critical race theory is hard for anybody to understand, myself included. And I think that it has mostly become a buzzword uh, mm -hmm. in shall we say, right-wing circles. We can't have this. Uh, and uh, if you actually look at what it's talking about, uh, we certainly need to have and want to, I think we, some of us want to have, accurate information mm -hmm. yep. about what has happened in our past. Um, the, the, yeah. the most recent attack on critical race theory comes from Oklahoma, where the governor is saying, um, we can't have that. And uh, of course, also, right now, coming out of Oklahoma, is a bunch of uh, information because it's the centennial of the attempt to make Tulsa, Oklahoma, into a sundown town. Now, oh. a, a sundown town, for people who don't know, right. and, and yeah. some people want to know, maybe, <laughs> is a town that was all white on purpose. And hmm. so, almost exactly 100 years ago, uh, Tulsa tried to drive out its entire black population, and they did drive out two-thirds of it before it just wow. became too big a project and, and, they, and had to be stopped. Wow. Well, this is the kind of thing that the governor doesn't want us dwelling on, I mm. think. Uh, but there's reasons to cover this kind of thing. Right, right. We, you know, we've seen sundown towns talked about a lot. You'd mentioned the, the movie Green Book. We see it in pop culture referenced a lot. Are we hitting the mark with a sundown town, or are we getting that wrong, too? The Green Book in particular gets it hilariously wrong. It's worth seeing, but consider this fact. People don't realize southern towns didn't go sundown on the whole. Sundown towns are a northern phenomenon. So in the Green Book, this odd couple, you'll remember it's a white driver and a black famous jazz pianist. Right. They get in the car together and they drive just fine through uh, Indiana. Now, Indiana has at least 200 sundown towns. They don't have any wow. problem. They drive through Illinois. I did the research on my home state of Illinois. Illinois mm -hmm. astoundingly has 506 sundown towns. Wow. No problem. They get into Iowa. Iowa has between 100 and 200 sundown towns. I'm not quite so sure. They get their way to, and no problem for them. They get to uh, uh, St. Louis, and then they find themselves uh, Memphis, and then they're going to Mississippi. And mm -hmm. damn if they don't run into a sundown town in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Now, I like, used to live in Mississippi, so I found every single sundown town there is, there are three. Wow. And they run into one of them, okay? Now, this is typical Hollywood. Uh, mm -hmm. in Hollywood has treated sundown towns that, that I know of five times. Four times it's a movie set in Mississippi and one time set in Georgia. But sundown towns are set in places like, for example, Maryland. Yeah, yeah. What are we like here in the in the DMV? Did we have sundown towns? Oh yes, uh, but right. we have them on the Maryland side. Uh, we even maybe have one or two that are still sundown towns as we speak. Wow. So, and, and furthermore, the entire western county, the furthest west county in Maryland, Garrett County, uh, had a sign at its gates uh, until into the 60s, the 1960s. Wow. It used the N word, I won't hear, but it, I wouldn't be using yeah. it anyway, I'd be quoting it. But uh, yeah. it said, Don't let the sun go down on you in Garrett County. All right, well, around mm -hmm. DC then, many of the northern suburbs, the Maryland suburbs, were sundown towns, including mm -hmm. astoundingly Mount Rainier, for instance, which is now about half black and, and had done good race relations and so on. But it was a sundown town. I've heard blood curdling yeah. incidents that happened. In, in Mount Mayor. Uh, the, the four different communities called Chevy Chase, uh, yeah. they're still almost entirely sundown, that is almost entirely white today. Meanwhile, wow. the Virginia suburbs, they didn't go sun, sundown. This huh. is one of the differences then between a northern state and a southern state, and in this way, Maryland did, uh, 
behaves like a northern state with a bunch mm -hmm. of sun doctors. What, like, is there a solution to this? Knowing that it's still a problem, that it's still happening, what can we do about it? Ferguson, Missouri comes to mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Ferguson was a sundown town briefly, and even be when it became 67% black, it still had, shall we say, its sundown town traditions in the wow. police force. So these are things that towns need to change, even yeah. if they are sundown no more. The first thing we can do about it is forget about these issues about rural um, critical race theory and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and instead get the facts. And so yeah. uh, these facts are actually available in my book. I'm going to hold them. Yeah, book. yeah, please. This is the book on Sundown. <laughs> uh, besides that, uh, you can find it on the web, and you can find my website on the web, and you can tell me more about Sundown Town. And every yeah. Sundown Town then needs to take what I call the three-step process. Okay. First step, admit it. Yes, we did this. And you know, even if even when we have really solid oral history that has incidents in the media, many towns refuse to admit. Right. Mm. Second, we did it and it was wrong and we apologize. So that's the second. And the third step, and we don't do it anymore. Mm. And that third step needs to have teeth. There are several towns in the Midwest, California, that have taken these three steps. And so it's evidence that you can do it. Well, Jim, I know this is just like the beginning of the conversation. Unfortunately, we don't have any more time here. Remind us of that website where we go to see all of your books, like Lies My Teacher Told Me and, and all of them. The easiest thing to do is just to type my name, James W. Lowen. you got to spell it right. That's L-O-E-W-E-N. Just type it into Google. Thank you so much, Professor Lowen, for that. He has written quite a few books, as he said. All you have to do is Google him. Don't forget that spelling, though. His last name is L-O-E-W-E-N.